It's one of the most influential and controversial social networks today, but for years struggled to moderate content and make money. Then one of the world's richest men stepped in. To some, he was the knight in shining armor. To others, he was Twitter's worst nightmare. It's official. Elon Musk has agreed to buy Twitter for $44 billion. Twitter down 11% after Musk filed to walk away from that merger agreement. There's two kind of dramatic outcomes that could come from this legal battle. Twitter is now officially owned by Elon Musk and the news is still sinking in. Oh, look who oh, it is. <laughs> Twitter customer support at, at, at your service. <laughs> We've got the expenses reasonably under control so the company's not like in the fast lane of bankruptcy anymore. And we're releasing features uh, faster than Twitter's history at the same time, Elon Musk is going to transition away from his CEO role into an executive chairman role. These days, everyone has an opinion on Twitter. So I wanted to get some perspective from its original architects. And these people know Twitter better than almost anyone. Obviously, it's a huge story that people have been fascinated with for a year now. So. Right. Well, years. Well, here we go. Should my feet be off the ground like a little kid in a high chair? <laughs> Let's just start with, like, tell me who you are and your, what was your role in the Twitter story? Should we do each other instead? Yes. So this is Jason, at Goldman on Twitter. Jason worked with me on Blogger. We got acquired. I left Google. Jason took over Blogger. But then we did Twitter, and he's like, I'm in. So you guys have been friends for a really long time. Indeed. Yes. And so Evan Williams uh, was uh, the creator and founder of Blogger. And then the dot crash happened. Um, and Ev kept it alive, essentially, through force of will. Uh, uh, yeah. Started Odeo, and uh, then Twitter was spun out, and he eventually became CEO of Twitter and was on the board. So there have been a lot of changing of the guards mm -hmm. at Indeed. Twitter. When yeah. Elon burst onto the scene, were you both just like, what? Yeah, it was surprising. I mean, I'm trying to remember the first bursting on, or if I was even aware of it, were you? The idea that he was gonna buy the company, to me initially seemed like, oh, he's not gonna be really serious about this. It's gonna be uh, like the way you sort of, you know, put in a reservation on like a fancy sports car. There have been a couple moments where I'm like, oh, I, I started this thing with some other people a long right. time ago in this little office, and then the world's richest man bought it. Right. And it's this big news story, I'm like how did, how did that happen? That's weird. Was there any part of you that was like, oh, this is interesting, maybe it's a I little exciting? Totally, yes. I like interesting things to happen. Right. I don't, I'm not a fan of things staying the way they are. I mean, the, that's why we do tech. That's why we start new things. Twitter had been getting better and better. Actually, the trajectory of improvements in the year or two uh, prior to Elon. But then it was like, Elon, holy, holy. Molly, he does crazy things. This will be interesting and fun. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we may then... differ on this point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was just concerned because like everything he was talking about that he wanted to do with the product seemed pretty lightly considered. We got to defeat all the bots and, yeah. you know, we, we, there's all this stuff about like the culture wars. But it became clear over time that, was, no, that is his primary interest in owning the platform is mm -hmm. to kind of push on these particular cultural uh, issues and his own personal use of the product he wants to make better. So how do you feel about what he's done so far? I don't think he's dialed it in quite right <laughs> yet. Well, it's gone pretty poorly. <laughs> I mean, of just objectively speaking, the moves fast sort of mythos is belied by that most of the things that have been pushed out the door, like Twitter blue or view counts, make sure you amplify my tweets so that everyone sees them. Uh, which is, again, if you own the product, you can do that. It's just a curious way to product manage a global platform. For years, Twitter was criticized for not innovating fast enough, not making enough money, struggling to get users. Did yeah. something have to happen? My main feedback that I recall giving on board is, we need to do more things, more innovation, more bigger, bolder bets. That's much easier said than done. A lot of that effort, though, was going towards making the platform more safe and dealing with a lot of things that have been overlooked for a long period of time, including you know, harassment, abuse, like manipulation by non-state actors. You're talking about real problems that they had to clean up and deal with. Um, so I, I respect the fact that they spent a lot of time on that as opposed to shipping new features. And given what we know now about how 2022 played out economically, something probably would have happened, right? Mm. You know, it's unlikely that Twitter would have just sailed through without massive layoffs, without some sort of activist interest in the company. Twitter was in a vulnerable state. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it needed to be 
uh, quite this silly. Is there something about his hardcore approach that's shaken the valley up? Well, I think the fact that interest rates are going up and there's the greatest economic downturn for the industry since 2000 has more to do with why the industry is shaken up. Um, and I don't think that Facebook and Google are doing massive layoffs because they saw that Elon could get people to sleep on the floor. There is, a, particularly among like the VC world, this hunger for this era of austerity, which is like employees with their free kombucha and all of their lattes and all of this stuff like that. Lattes. Everyone wants these goddamn lattes. They're running us out of business. Can't sell enough ads to afford these kombucha on tap. And and like now that era is over and you know people are gonna have to buckle down. The tables have turned, the austerity of Silicon yeah. Valley begins. Jack Dorsey, mm -hmm. who co-founded Twitter with you, mm -hmm. said, Twitter is the closest thing we have to a global consciousness. Solving for the problem of Twitter being a company, Elon is the singular solution I trust. This is one of the worst age tweets of all time. <laughs> like, I mean, like this is this is honestly one of the worst tweets that's ever been put on the platform, and there's a lot of them. Jack has been very consistent on this from the beginning, is that he really was interested in Twitter as a protocol, like a, a public good that could be used uh, in the same way that civic infrastructure exists. The problem was with Twitter is that we were inherently not building a public good, we were building a for-profit enterprise. I had debates when I was running the company with Jack and other people in the company about whether Twitter could or should be that. Mm -hmm. And I think Jack agrees at this point that once it was, we took venture capital, it couldn't be that. What I think is interesting and exciting is that it's opened up a space for potentially other platforms or other protocols to emerge and people may pay attention to them because Twitter maybe has less of a gravitational force for everybody's attention. There are a lot of folks out there who are angry at Jack. Like I think some folks feel like Jack fed Twitter to the Elon wolves. Do you feel that at all or? I, I do. Uh, like the, I mean, if you look at the timeline of how the deal was put together, it's pretty clear that Jack was instrumental. I'm not mad at Jack. I think he made a mistake. I mean, he cares so deeply and he did the decision he thought was correct. I'm guessing it's not going the way he was hoping. In fact, Dorsey admits it all went south. So let's take the other part of the tweet. What is Twitter? Is Twitter the global town square? Is yeah. it the global consciousness in your view? Oh, gosh, no. We have a global consciousness. It's not Twitter. I think that's not right. It's conceptually sort of like, oh, let's connect all the people in the world and have a communication mechanism. Even at Google, with the best technologists in the world, people who are building the bleeding edge of the internet in the early 2000s, those people, including the founders, fundamentally did not understand that the web was a platform for self-expression. You have been digging through yeah, your treasure chest. Yeah. Home uh, tweet home. Yeah. So this is an old version of Larry Bird. Um, in which she had like Larry the Bird. Larry the oh, Bird. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. the bird was named Larry. Larry the bird's named Larry. Okay. Yeah. That's Twitter 2007. You guys get to South by Southwest. Are you? Is this like? What are you feeling? Is this like? Oh my God! We just created this thing, and we're gonna change the world. Uh, yes. You know, <laughs> yeah. There was a time in which having a cell phone was not a sufficient condition to know what your friends were doing. The memory lane thing is so interesting because there's so much history that's intertwined with world history. Mm. I mean, could you even pick like a, what fave tweets of all time? Plane landing in the Hudson. Plane landing in the Hudson is a good one. Plane landing in the Hudson broke on Twitter and that uh, was just... What? Fave celebrity onboarding moments. I got invited on Oprah. Gone. Hi, it's Friday Live, and I'm on Twitter for the first time. <laughs> Sitting next to me is Evan Williams, the co-founder of Twitter. Can you believe all this Tweedly D stuff going on? <laughs> <laughs> the plan was I would talk about Twitter, she'd ask me a couple questions, and she'd send her first tweet on air. And then she hit the key with the yellow tape on it, which doesn't makes sense. send the tweet. It didn't send the tweet. The tweet went away. Yeah. And uh, then they kept a commercial. And so when they're at commercial, I typed in her tweet. You impersonated like, Oprah, is basically what we're learning. Yeah. <laughs> Another memorable one was the Dalai Lama, who supposedly he wanted to be on Twitter. And it was super awkward. He's delightful, obviously, but it felt like I was there to sell him on right. Twitter. And, and I said, oh, so we're going to you know, get you on. He's like, I don't need that. And he's like, <laughs> But I was told that's why we're, I thought this was all sold through already. This was 
pre-iPhone, I think. Yeah. And so we got his account all set up. So we just gave him the BlackBerry and then he used this account or one of his people used this account for years. But my wife and I paid the bill, the BlackBerry. So, <laughs> so we were paying Dalai Lama's cell phone bill for a very long time. Do you, do you know how, like the shortcut to Nirvana that you get by virtue of having the Dalai Lama on your friends and family plan <laughs> has to be, has to be amazing. <laughs> This was a way of using the web as this portal mm -hmm. into other people's experiences and other people's lives. Well, this is the hardest question, right? Yeah. Like what makes it amazing also makes it accessible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you keep the best <laughs> right. without the worst? Yeah. Right. There is a view that the problem with centralized platforms or for-profit platforms is they, they take all the money mm -hmm. that all the people create. But Twitter in its history has never made money. Like right. there's been profitable years, exactly. but overall there's no money. I mean, I've made money. I mean, Thank you. But um, in, to some extent, platforms, once they reach a certain scale, do kind of work like governments. You have to have rules and you have to enforce rules, I believe, or else you have anarchy. And in some sense, regulation has been trying to ke catch up. So you were the White House chief digital officer. Mm -hmm. Do you think Twitter should be regulated? Oh, definitely. The type of regulation I think is almost inarguable that anyone ought support is just greater transparency on how these things work. There is this naive perception similar to the money making thing, which is that these companies will do anything to twist the knob to squeeze a few more dollars. The reality is that no one running these companies actually understands what's going on that well. <laughs> that, like, I mean, like the, these are we're talking about stochastic systems that are amplifying content according to a set of rules that some human wrote, but the output of those rules is unpredictable. I mean, increasingly, some human didn't write the rules. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so you don't even know, you don't even know what people are seeing or why. We, including the people who built these systems, can't confidently say they understand the effect of what they've built. Mm -hmm. People outside have no idea the complexity and right. the thoughtfulness that goes into these decisions mm -hmm. about what can stay on. It reminds me of different metaphors. You're like, you're like hosting a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like someone's ruining the vibe. Yeah. If you want to have a good party in a good environment, you need to make it comfortable and safe for everybody. But you, you try to do that for the whole world and then it gets very hard and it's very, very nuanced. And I believe you want to host a good party, not just say like, do whatever you want on the streets. We just pave the streets and that's all we do. How do you feel right now looking at something that you created kind of going through this? I'm very zen, but <laughs> I, I was sad when the purchase actually went through. I was like, oh, I no longer own any Twitter. And I really felt for the people who were there who went and, you know, had a lot of turmoil and lots of really great people. But maybe we just, had the wrong idea with Twitter, now it's time to move on to some other idea. Some other ideas that Musk has moved on to? A TikTok-inspired For You timeline, a new color-coded verification system, he's gotten rid of legacy check marks, and of course, Twitter Inc., the company, doesn't even exist anymore. It's now called X Corp. Even some Twitter employees still on the inside admit it's a work in progress as those now on the outside continue to process what it was like being in the eye of the storm. So give me some snapshots over the course of the deal or no deal roller coaster. What was happening inside the company? It felt like the company was kind of uh, frozen. Uh, you know, it was not the most productive uh, six months at the company. Even though the company feels or felt internally like there wasn't a lot going on, the rest of the world was buzzing. So I would head into headquarters and my manager was saying, um, be careful because there are people out there that are wearing body cams. It was as if um, everybody just wanted a piece of the pie. I think we didn't really know if it was really ever going to really happen until yeah. the last minute. Yeah. It was just yeah. such a roller coaster right. and you, it felt like a bad Netflix series. But a, a lot of it unfolded on Twitter too. Like yeah. a lot of Twitter's culture is yes. using right. the product. The deal happens. Elon Musk owns Twitter. Were any of you inside the company the day he walked in with the sink? I wish I had. Oh my God, I wish I had. I, I was. Manu, you are, you were the resident cartoonist. You gave your new boss a cartoon that was kind of making fun of him. I picked one that would not be uh, perceived as bootlicking, not being too kind, but I didn't want one that was so critical that would, he would fire me on the spot. It was a very Twittery, um, you know, response for, for you. You break it, you buy it. 
Um, Explain it. Because he was damaging the company in many ways, like the stock was going up and down and it was just chaos. So I thought, you know, if you, you break the company in a way, like the culture, even from the outside, so now you have to buy it. What kind of communications did you have with Elon himself or his team? What were they telling uh, you to do? There were these lifeboat projects where Elon would just, you know, in a random meeting, say an idea, and all of a sudden that was one of the directives, um, top prime directives for the company to work on. Yeah, that explains why I was reviewing so much documentation from teams and projects I've literally never heard of until that day. I think it's a very common um, toxic management technique to keep people on very tight deadlines so they never have time to think. At some point, I made a very simple tool to help people save some of their documents, things that would be useful for future employment. And then I was fired one hour later. I mean, I was in, in mid-meeting. I was in a meeting for some high-priority Elon you know, have to be done by yesterday sort of project. And uh, I was disconnected from the meeting. We all received an email saying that the next morning you would receive one of two emails, one that would either go to your personal email telling you that you're no longer with the company, or to your work email saying that you know, you're still at the company. For a lot of us, it would be our, our last day at Twitter. Um, and for me, it was. People just were putting the salute emoji into uh, one of the company-wide Slack yeah. channels. And yeah, it was uh, sort of amazing to watch that all, all sort of happening at once. Now, this is like four days before the election. Yep. And Helen said you were working on election misinformation. Uh, I was. I had so many windows open that day, trying to monitor like midterm elections, trying to connect with different teams. And I checked the VPN. VPN is log logged out. And that's how I found out that I had lost access and was no longer a part of the company. And I know I worked remotely, but I think that was truly one of the times where I felt the most alone. Sean, you lasted longer than anyone. Yeah. And um... then you decided to resign. I'm not the kind of person to have an illusion about company where you find my like soulmates or like you know devote. I, I guess I don't identify my core being with the company. The way like layoffs were done, there was like no like like grace to it. Mm -hmm. Like two weeks later, he sent an email, uh, basically like you know an ultimatum to Twitter employees. Like there, you have two options. One, you stay at Twitter 2.0 and we're extremely hardcore. Two, get some severance and like get lost. And I was like. This is my exit ticket. <laughs> yeah. Turn down the hardcore approach. I'm, I'm not very hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> How many people does it actually take to keep Twitter up and running? At some point, Twitter is a company that everyone was making fun of because Twitter went down all the time, fail whale. But then Twitter did a lot of good job uh, making things stable. And there was like, a lot of like, innovative technology like Twitter um, like, invented, it came up with. And I think it's a testament to the existing engineers who, who wrote very robust systems. You know, some things can probably get done faster because there's sort of less management and bureaucracy and layers and things like that. I had a former coworker at Google who said something like their their product shipment strategy is constipated. Mm. <laughs> so does that make Elon Musk like a big laxative or something? <laughs> Is it the public town square? Should it be held to a higher standard, or is it just a, very a business? Unique jewel I agree. In, on the internet and in the world. And uh, there's nothing quite like it. There's these other platforms and you can go there, but I think having a single space where, you know, you can tweet at your congressperson and, yeah. you know, there's, there's a good chance they'll see it and there's a chance they'll reply and things like that. That's not happening on Facebook. That's not happening on Instagram. That's not happening on TikTok. I think it is important that there be some, some sort of public square on the internet. Does Twitter survive this? Well, we tried to kill the product a lot. I mean, we, we, <laughs> we I mean, it didn't work very well for a while when we were working there. That's so, true. I mean, true. It, it, we, it there's... seems to be anti fragile, <laughs> but I, it'll survive. I mean, yeah. things, things that big don't die. I mean, Yahoo's still a company. MySpace is still a thing. So you're MySpace comparing Twitter to Yahoo? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's fine. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's thriving, but reputationally, it's very different. Does the brand recover? I think that's hard. I think brand recovery is much harder. And now the brand is very linked to Elon. Should it be a company? Yeah. Should the internet be a company? No. And guess what? Anyone can make a new Twitter or a better Twitter or a, like just a whole new paradigm on the internet. And lots of people are trying right yeah. now. And that's really cool.
I, I share I share your optimism, which is rare for me. Uh, <laughs> but like you know, because you know we're in like a really bad market right now, and that's when the coolest stuff has always that's happened. True. I mean, we met up in the 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 post dot crash era, right. um, and we, we were like in a detective's office on Market Street. Like you know, it was like there was no one was building companies in San Francisco. The other thing that drives me possibilities is is platform evolution, and there hasn't been one in a long time in tech. The last platform mm -hmm. evolution was the mobile revolution and the, cl mm -hmm. and the and cloud computing revolution. And it's been, a, for in terms of tech, just a very long time since those. And you know it's a long time by how thirsty the industry is to believe in anything else. Like, like please let it be Web3. Please let it be the VR goggles. There's got to be some new land out there. Um, and now, like, everyone believes it's going to be AI. And, it, and that one, at least, as opposed to the other two, looks like it might be something. Mm -hmm. Like, you can do stuff with it, which is, a, and it's getting better faster, which yeah. is a good hallmark of technology. What about Elon Musk's brand? Does that recover? I think he's brilliant, but no one's brilliant on everything. everything. This is one of, in my view, Silicon Valley's fundamental sins, is, is the sin of genius, where you believe that someone who's made a ton of money must be smart. I think the idea of social media is probably the thing I'm questioning the most right now. Yeah. For a minute, we thought, oh, the best would be if we like, got media from our friends. TikTok and some other places are showing, the media from your friends is probably not as good as the media from some super talented you know, person who's you've never met before. And I actually think there's tons of interesting things now if we think about how do we use the internet to help people be more social without consuming or creating media. So maybe the future of social media is the separation of social and, and media. media. Really yeah. interesting. Okay. What are the chances that Elon does pull this off? What are the chances he creates a Twitter that's a better version of I what it is? I would rule it out. Yeah. I don't know how comfortable Elon is with losing billions of dollars. Maybe he's fine. Maybe he can get to break even and then just yeah. play with it. If 100 million people in the world share the most interesting idea or thought and the computers could algorithmically give you the most interesting slice of that, that's a hell of a media service. But I also think generally the new thing does not come from the old thing. Yeah. I love talking about tweets. I have a weird relationship with Twitter. We all do. Everyone <laughs> in the world. Yeah, I feel like this is maybe this will give you some closure. Any advice from old Twitter to new Twitter? Some of the stuff that's trying to come along mm -hmm. to replace Twitter is like, this is gonna be a serious place for serious conversations mm -hmm. by serious people. And I don't think that's what attracts a global audience. I don't think that's yeah. what succeeds ultimately. It's gotta be delightful. I love that point. Twitter was fundamentally founded on humor. Yeah. And it was a bunch of people who liked joking around and they created a new way to joke. So what about, what about advice from old Twitter to the new Twitters of the future? I, my advice for entrepreneurs just generally is never to underestimate the role that luck plays in your life. Mm -hmm. We like in the industry to ascribe success to like some flash of brilliance that people have, and those things do happen. But so much of the execution risk comes down to being lucky and like mm -hmm. being in the right place at the right time at the right cycle of the platform evolution. And we're entering a somewhat exciting phase in which everything is kind of in ruins and smoldering and that should produce something good. All right, well. Here's to being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Maybe getting used to a new vibe. Yeah. Right? Get lucky. New vibe. Should we gaze off into the distance poignantly? <laughs> new vibe. <laughs> new vibe.